For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, June 15, 2016. The Flint River is now officially off the table as a backup for the Flint water system. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that a memo from the state to the Flint City Council made it clear that the Flint River was no longer an option as a backup source. City officials such as Genesee County Drain Commissioner Jeff Wright and Flint Councilman Eric Mays attended a meeting Monday with the Carignani Water Authority, the EPA, the DEQ, and the city. And although the mayor has not decided on which permanent water supply the city will use, there was no doubt left that the Flint River is off the table. Currently, a subcommittee in Lansing created by Governor Snyder is working to identify Flint's primary and backup water supplies. A three-mile stretch of pipeline is allegedly all that remains to hook the city of Flint up to a new pipeline from Lake Huron. But indecision in City Hall is holding up funding. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that funding from the state was passed in the state's newest budget. But until Mayor Weaver decides which water system the city will commit to, construction has been halted. Mayor Weaver, in a press conference yesterday, said once again that she is hesitating to commit until all options have been explored. According to the report, Mayor Weaver did not make it clear what she was waiting for and has not provided a time frame for making a decision. Because of the mayor's decision to hold up the process in favor of apparent further study, Jeff Wright says that the construction season window is closing and the city's connection to a new water supply will likely be delayed until next summer. City spokeswoman Kristen Moore said in an email to the Flint Journal that aside from millions already committed from the state, Mayor Weaver says that more money is needed to complete the project. An appeals court in Washington, D.C. has upheld the FCC's open Internet order. What this means, according to Engadget.com, is that Internet service providers are required to maintain equal access to the entire Internet. This matters because without so-called net neutrality laws in place, ISPs could charge even more for access to websites outside of a list of approved services or block access to competing services. According to Engadget, in 2014, Netflix measured a drop in speeds to their service, despite major service providers denying any wrongdoing. Netflix then paid Internet gateway companies such as Comcast for guaranteed bandwidth, although national ISPs never officially demanded more money to ensure that their product could be viewed. The problem is that Netflix can just increase their subscription fees to counterbalance the need to pay off Internet service providers, but smaller websites like WKUF.FM, for example, would likely be unable to afford a fee to assure access to their site. What net neutrality does, as the appeals court affirmed in yesterday's ruling, is it makes sure that the Internet remains an open public service where everyone has access to whatever websites they want. The major Internet service providers argue this point, implying that their infrastructure is not designed for modern services like streaming video and have pledged to fight the ruling. The U.S. Senate voted overwhelmingly yesterday to pass a $602 billion defense spending bill. Reuters reports that President Obama opposed some provisions in the Senate's version of the bill and has threatened to veto. The president is threatening a veto based on allowances that would make it difficult to close Guantanamo Bay and provisions that would limit military spending. Other controversial lines in the bill include a requirement for women to register for the draft and a ban on closure of military bases, regardless of their need. According to Reuters, if this National Defense Authorization Authority is not passed by November, there is the possibility that it could affect some members of Congress from being reelected, and a vote could be pushed off until after elections to prevent damage to any, any member's campaigns. The Senate bill must now be reconciled with the House bill before it is brought before the president for a signature. And as a note, Flint Representative Dan Kildee voted no on the NDAA and is expected to vote again on the bill when it comes back to the House and is up for re-election in November. In sports, the Tigers took the lead early last night and despite a late-inning drive from Chicago, beat the White Sox 11-8. To get those 11 runs, Tigers' bats recorded 17 hits, 7 doubles and 2 triples. J.D. Martinez alone hit three doubles, got on base five times, and scored three times. Cabrera chalked up four hits of his own, reached five times, and scored twice, and Justin Upton drove in four. Tonight, Tigers ready Mike Pelfrey is on the mound to face off against Chicago's Chris Sales for an 8-10 start at the U.S. Cellular Field on Chicago's south side. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.